better as this tournament goes on. Ataki's champion pool, I think, is one way that IG could go right now. Yeah, certainly could be a lot of focus on the junglers on both sides. You know, we heard the desk also talking about getting comfort for Ning because Fnatic loves to play aggressive across the board. They don't always play with respect to the junglers because they have such confidence in their individual play and their mechanics to carry them through. And that can make you vulnerable to ganks. And I actually already love how the bands are shaping up so far because it lines up so well with what you expect for both of these teams. The fact that the Shy and Rookie are such huge threats on these Assassins, the Aurelia and the Akali. Tom Kench removes some of the safety from the bottom lane to let Jackie Love and Bowland punish down there because it's so hard. Removes Scion, maybe to even add more volatility topside. Carries everywhere, of course, the Swain trimming for Bwipo makes a lot of sense. There's a third top lane carry removed. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you take away that Scion because the Shy would love to play a skill matchup here. He would love to play something that is less punishable. Uh, we'll see if he is going to be able to find that for himself. First pick, Alistar is so exciting for an LPL lineup. Ooh. Oh, actually. Wow. Fnatic throwing the gauntlet down for laning phase. Aatrox and Urgot, they're not getting any counter picks. They are blinding top and mid. I think this is actually pretty clever, though, because what they're trying to do is, you know, take away that good matchup in the top lane for the Shy. They're saying, great, you wanted to play either side of the Urgot Aatrox matchup? Well, now you get neither. So now it becomes, are you willing to play a much more risky matchup, you know? And it, you don't even know which one's going where. So if you were to say, oh, we'll play Fiora into the Aatrox and slam it, well, then all of a sudden it's the Urgot that's going to go top lane. And I think this is pretty clever. However, it does make them very heavily physical damage, though, because Reckless doesn't really play AP bots. And that's what I was going to say. It also impacts their team fight because all of a sudden, there's no real easy clear go button unless it's on Brox or a Hillisung. I think that they have performed better when the top lane is playing a little bit more of that tank style, which is why I like the Scion ban. And it just makes you medium range, which is not really a bad thing, but we've seen how well IG disengage and re-engage team fights. It can be a risk. So do you take Talia right away? And the next is going to be no, as he looked for the Braum here in the bottom lane to add some more safety down there. I agree with your point about being physical heavy, though. I think yeah. magic damage is needed in the comp somewhere and famously not a reckless thing. Yeah, I mean, with Kaisa taking off the board, you know, that Kog'Maw. is kind of, you could go Kog'Ma for mixed damage. You know, we have seen AP Varus in the past, but certainly not that popular anymore. You can still go like Rage Blade auto attack Varus and have some mixed damage, but we'll see if IG even picks a tank because if they don't, it becomes so much less important. That's what I was going to say. There's a small gamble that, you know, Ning plays in Zhao or something along those lines. The Shy plays a gangplank top yep. lane and then it's just, you know, doesn't matter. They just run at each other over and over again and may the better team fight team win. Might be the case here. Bans coming through so far. LeBlanc, one of the champions that Fnatic may be a little bit afraid of, thinking that Rise may go into the top lane here. And Sivir, as was mentioned, of course, no allowance for Reckless. And I think Reckless might then go down to something like a Tristana, uh, which he has always really preferred historically. Uh, interesting to see if IG does want to target his champion pool again. Uh, Reckless often does not like playing the Zaya as much, but it is going to be banned away anyway. All right, Tristana going to be the lock-in right away. No hesitation there for Fnatic's side, and they're going to wait for their jungle pick last. I don't expect the Aatrox or the Urgot to go there. I think the success in that role is a bit limited, but what a bamboozle it would be if it was actually the flex. Mm -hmm. So it is Tristana. This is certainly, I think, a fairly weak laning phase, but I still think that Reckless and his style of play can work very well with it. He loves to build attack speed. He loves to push. That is the Tristana style. It'll come down to if IG can hold the lane, and we are going to get a Woo! Fiora. Oh, my God. The shy Fiora is really incredible to watch. But what I said earlier really does come into play because, great, this is a counter pick into that Aatrox, but you can swap the lanes. You can put the Urgot into Fiora, which I think is a lot harder of a matchup for Fiora. But you can start chasing them around the map because I'm sure Rookie yeah. would be happy to go top side of the map as well. And that is a very aggressive oh composition put together by Invictus. This is going to be so ridiculously hype. Both these teams pulling out all the stops for this game. IG looking to make the 6-0 run to get first in the group and Fnatic wanting to prove their worth against this IG team, trying to force that tiebreaker and claim a first place seed. And forward motion, aggressive comp here for Fnatic. There are no farming tanks on Invictus, so nope. mono damage type, not a huge problem here for Fnatic. We'll see where the matchups go overall, but this is going to be an exciting one. A battle for first place in the group. If Invictus win, of course, they're 6-0, and and it's theirs by rights. If Fnatic win, we get a tiebreaker right after this one, and essentially a game three will decide who is taking the top spot. 
first seed definitely much more important here. The quality of teams that are in that second seed at the quarterfinals, certainly a bit easier for the winner here. This is going to be exciting, though. Aggression all around. The Fiora top lane. This is going to be fun. Now, I do want to talk about how these teams could stack up against each other. Because when you have Riot's Fiora, you can play 1-3-1. One, one. Mm -hmm. Ergot Aatrox, they can do the exact same thing. If this becomes a Meatball comp, however, I do worry about Fnatic's ability to get in. You're going up against Alistar, a champion that you always talk about for its engaged potential, but has got very strong disengaged potential. At the same time, you are running a composition with a Kaiser that will shred the front line in an extremely credible rate. This could be a difficult uh, game for Fnatic to really be able to pick their mark and get that one team fight. It is very true, but at the same time, Fiora is not that good of a team fighter. It's very risky to team fight on this champion. If you use the repulse at the wrong time, you will get treaded. You are not building those tank stats. So I do think we're going to see IG commit pretty heavily to the Fiora split push. And that can be dangerous for Fnatic as well, because in that late game, if he can get a matchup against the Aatrox, you can decimate that champion. And Fnatic are making the swap. We'll see if IG try to match lanes, or if they're going to be happy to play the Fiora into the Urgot, because Caps has taken the Aatrox, and I think this is a very smart move, and something we talked about in draft. Well, we are on to Summoner's Rift. You heard those teleports coming in. A battle for first in the group on the line. Chinese fans clearly in attendance here, rooting for IG. Europe has shown up as well. All right, and as we get ourselves into the game, this is certainly going to be exciting. We saw the Urgot get swapped onto Bwipo at the very end of Champion Select there. Of course, as you were mentioning, Azale, Urgot versus Fiora, the intended matchup for Fnatic. And I think the big thing here for me is that one team, if their side lane is fall, uh, behind, has a very good disengage. You have a look at Zinzao, Tristana, as well as Braum. They're going to excel at going backwards. So, you know, if Whippo and Caps get ahead in the side lanes, they can push in. Mm -hmm. Their core is hard to engage on. On the flip side, however, if IG's side laners get ahead, it's going to be hard for Broxa and Hillisong to generate engages. So I think that this early game, it is so important to play towards Whippo's lane. I yeah. think that they need to be able to generate a gold lead. Fiora, from behind, is one of the worst champions in the game. That's from ahead, she's insufferable. Both those things are true, and certainly a matchup to watch for. A volatile top lane is going to be exciting. She is going to play to that lane directly, and we'll be up against Whippo as a hard leash comes in for Broxa to have you, an early gank potential with that red buff. You do have to expect, though, that for this Fiora against the Urgot, it is going to be very tough early on. Urgot very likely going to have the push for a lot of it. He's going to be able to harass Fiora, you know, under the turret as she's trying to farm up. And, you know, certainly I think it takes a while for the Fiora to be able to come online unless there is jungle intervention. Big pull rise. That's going to be a stun on a battle land, though. Decent trading there for Reckless's barrier, or uh, I should say Guardian, blocked pretty much all the damage. Fnatic will have the first push in this lane. So skill matchup though it may be, Fnatic having a good start with it. Rox has gotten himself down to the bottom side quickly. Actually, that was red buff into Scuttle to make sure that Leeson maybe couldn't turn that one around, as you can see even a Trinket Ward watching the other way through the lane. And I also really like that, just to be able to protect Reckless on the bottom side. He wants to push on the Tristana. It's going to be about shoving in, so get that Scuttle a little bit more vision and safety for that Fnatic bottom lane. Ooh, and this could be exciting as Rookie's coming back into lane. Ning not spotted on the Trinket, I do believe, but Sinjao camping in this brush. Hoping Rookie comes down, but he's not biting, and yeah, spotted by the Trinket Ward. Rookie playing to the correct side of the lane. And that's a really nice ward, because it's far enough down the ramp that it sees you enter and exit the brush, no matter how close to the wall hug you are, but also isn't easy to take out from the pixel brush. So I like the reward position there. Also allows for the map to just be split now. You know, it's really intelligent, because Fnatic started the game by sweeping a ward in that location at level one, and IG revisits, puts the ward back down. Fnatic, of course, trying to gank there, thwarted by very smart warding by IG, but very, very, very smart and unsung in that one. And well, there is the push for now for the Fiora. It's very much because we saw Bwipo leashing. Uh, he was over at the red, so Shy was able to actually prep that wave and get it going in his direction. Not only that, generally as a jungler, you do have your first path scouted out as you go into a game, and he would have, uh, so Broxa would have said, you know what, I want to gank mid lane, I want to look for my opportunity to get caps ahead. Bwipo therefore just doesn't push his way. Just throws abilities at the Fiora, tries to harass out, doesn't really throw it at 
the Fiora if they're standing within the creep wave. So I actually think Whippo's done the smart thing here by allowing himself shoved in. There is little to no dive potential here as he is so healthy. Waiting to see as Brox are getting a little bit of cannon jungling himself as Ning had tried to walk into that side of the jungle, didn't find much. Now fighting for these chickens, the Q's gonna land and, and very little was actually stolen away. Brox had mostly lost time down there. Yeah, but he will have a couple camps to kind of retreat to on the top side and there's no camps up right now for Ning. So he can either try to look for some ganks or just simply reset on the map. And it looks like he is trying to get in position to come over the wall with Rookie. And you can see Rookie's pretty much in safeguard range, but not going to happen there. Now he shows, and not going to be much of a problem. Leech has a very little bit of XP there. And, uh, ooh, a bit of miscoordination. They double the Trinket Wards up. And this is something that IG do tend to do. Not to double the Trinket up, but guarantee <laughs> Rookie doesn't have to back on a freeze. Because you can see right now, there's a big minion wave as held just off turret. If he had to go back, you know, that could be another wave lost. So I like that, actually. Yeah, nice damage on the side, but a good shield comes up for Hila Song, and they're going to trade stuns, you have to believe, Rookie. Actually, not in this fight. It was uh, Baoland taking some damage there. I got my names wrong for no good reason. Either way, though, bot lane equal in CS. And you can see Caps again. He actually pulled the wave before he recalled there. So again, trying to set up that freeze, trying to deny some of the farm from Rookie and uh, may force Rookie to TP back, which he does to make sure that wave can crash. Remember, Caps is sitting on Ignite and is down on the farm. So credit to Rookie for a strong early laning phase. And last time these two mid laners did meet, he certainly got the best of Caps as well. All right, pretty big farm lead, plus 18. This early Aatrox pick so far not doing well. No Magic Mantle and Boots, the first items. Caps trying to sort of suffer through this one. The goal is to try to make a bad matchup for the Shy, but that one's not paying forward yet. He's equal in farm, and Caps is suffering through it. And even further to that point, Whippo has also gone with a Bramble there yep. for his first item. So it's not like he's looking to dominate this laning phase. It will keep him very safe. He's probably never going to die. Well, it means the Shy can't trade ever because he'll take more damage than he deals. So I do think it makes a lot of sense for the matchup to ensure you can never lose the lane. Yeah, and I would say you can also sometimes force trades more aggressively with this item because there is less healing. And with that ultimate, perhaps, you know, be able to actually make something happen in the 1v1, but we'll see. You know, how Wibbo was able to do up there. Because my worry is is that now the Shy just makes him play against the wave. Yeah. Then, you know, without any additional AD, can you push hard enough? To once again engaged down here. And the body slam slides. Uh, no, yeah, it's headbutt pulverized now into the push forward as Brox is going to try to walk down. They're going to find a slow, but no more stuns available just yet until the Q's back up from cooldown. Will it be enough for Baoland? He does not have summoners anymore. The stun into the knockup, and first blood comes through for Brox. Uh, no reinforcements in range just yet. Jackie Love gets nothing for it. You can see Rookie tried to head down there, had the ultimate available, but could not get in range. Great play from Fnatic to punish the overaggression. Yeah, really nicely done there from Broxa to be able to get down there. Reckless and Hillisang able to set it up. And we'll see now if the Shy is able to get any sort of advantage up on the top side. But here it is one more time. Baoland had been using his headbutt pulverize very aggressively in this lane for trading. And I think this is just a play towards that. Yeah, well, they knew that Broxa was there because he just hit the plant over the uh, Scuttlecrab. So it wasn't like that that was a play without information. It was pinged immediately. Also, the fact that his jungler right now in Ning is on Grump Camp, that is just a very bad play from Baoland to look for Harass at that stage. Didn't have much uh, river vision either other than that Scuttle. And obviously, as you mentioned, got spotted out. That went poorly. So Fnatic tied in gold as this game moves forward. The mid lane farm difference still massive. Answered, though, by the fact that first blood in the jungle is nice. And hey, now, if you're able to generate a lead onto your Tristana, if you can get your jungle accelerated, a lot of the problems we've been discussing for Fnatic, you know, the loss of CS in the mid lane, as well as maybe a slightly more defensive perspective on the Urgot matchup, is a very good thing. Tristana, yeah. one of the best champions at Sieging Turret, you're going up against, you know, a melee core on the side of IG. This game could open up very quickly. Yeah, it really could. I mean, if you get Reckless ahead, you can group and perhaps push, force the Fiora to come to you before she is really ready uh, for that stage of the game. And we'll see if Fnatic is going to be able to do it because certainly IG does have the farm advantages in a number of these lanes. And that is why that kill for Broxa was so important to really get this team back to even keel. And Broxa is a great catalyst. He is very aggressive with leads. He continually looks for his own plays and looks for team plays. So I think that, you know, if there is a member apart from Caps, arguably, that you want to have a gold lead, it is going to be Broxa. And he also impacted one of the most volatile lanes in that bottom lane at this stage. You know, Kaisa, once again, very short range, will want to look for those scrappy fights can be taken advantage of. 
looking still at this game as Caps is going to start taking some of this jungle away. This is one of the good things about mid laners with CC is you get to take Scuttles, give your top side some vision, and pad your stats by another 114 gold. <laughs> Whippo still shoving in, and uh, yeah, is putting the Shy under turret for now, but you're right, the farm is only staying equal. The Shy can push, he's got a team at. Uh, so far, this lane is going uh, just, just one for one. And in a similar way is Camille, as once again. The same trade over and over. Goes in the heaven pulverize, then goes in for the ulti now as Reckless Rocket is backwards. That means the chase and the battle going to be difficult as the ulti stay alive and they will just trade blows yet again. Yeah, I mean, they force out the ult from Balan at least and pretty heavy trading here up the on the top ult. side. He's going for the big play, gets pushed around, but one more shot will get all the healing coming across and then it's not going to matter too much, but Whippo is still running out of HP. The Shy actually chunking right through that Bramble Vest. All the true damage from that ultimate coming out and the Shy getting him very low. No jungler on top side of the map, so dive is unlikely. Likely. The root is on. Do they want to even go for caps though? He has ulti. Q's not going to hit as Hilosong roams in towards mids and now the jungle is both known. Yeah, and that's actually a really nice play from Ning to just show some patience because they were pinging the pack that Tilly was heading up the river. So, you know, Fnatic shut down the play, clear out some good vision. Now, potentially, however, they can look for something as they are returning bottom lane. And there was a big trade top lane very recently. Ignite from Spellbook and the ult from Whippa was just used a second ago and the shot got dropped down to 200. So there was at least a trade of action. And that went a bit more towards equal as they both regen back up. So it will still be this 10 CS lead so far for the Fiora. Uh, but the health bar is uh, both low now. And what I was going to mention is Fiora is a similar champion to Camille, as in she's one of those time bomb split pushes. However, Camille takes stru structures very quickly. Fiora just kills you over <laughs> and over again at a certain point in the game. Just because of that true damage and the ability for her E to continue to scale up and give her those free crits. Uh, certainly an oppressive champion if this game goes to, you know, three, four items. Yeah, yeah. I even generally think, you know, once you have the armor pen, once you have a CDR, and then you add life scale on top Ooh, of that, it's so good. 2v2, but look at the damage output already. This could be the shutdown. No, interrupted! And Cap stops the mid-Q. The fight will maybe continue as Rookie's going to back up, but Bowland is here. Cap's ult, but the health bar is low. He'll be reviving at about 120 health. Now, will the re-engage go well? Can Brock the turn it? Can the damage happen? Down to 250. Not quite in range. There's the Ignite flashing in. Cat for the solo kill. Can't quite make it happen, but Ignite will trade a one for one. I should say two for one in the mid lane. And Rookie canceled his auto there, allowing Caps to perhaps get that last auto to kill, but Shy is down here for Broxa. He's going to get one, two, three. The fourth is going to be for sure as Shy gets a kill in mid. Now, Bipo wants in on the action. Not gonna be much. He has Ghost, but no ult. The Shy can do some damage. I don't expect kills here without over aggression. Either way, long for mid lane went two for two. Quite the fight. Yeah, nice outplays there from Caps and Broxa to win the initial play here. As it looked like IG's trying to set up the play, but Broxa goes in. Caps doing a great job with the knockup, shutting down Ning before he could come in for the execute on Broxa. Yeah, and there was full vision of that play from the IG lineup, but because there wasn't vision in the brush. Brox's aggression, I think, caught them by surprise. That is a heads up play from the Fnatic jungler. And this is potentially what Nerves looks like, ladies and gentlemen. You can see trying to cut out, cancelled auto. Yeah. Probably cost Rocky the, Rookie the kill, and then obviously Caps trading back in a 1v2. That is fantastic play from the Fnatic mid laner. They're going for more, though. The first knock is going to land. Now they've got Braum here on top of this one. Lee Sin's nearby, but look at the crowd control. Can they shut down Rookie? The Q gets tanked, and this dive not quite going to happen. Ning going to be able to walk away alongside Rookie almost in the mid lane. Really important counter gank there for Ning to not allow Rookie to just go down twice in a row to keep some presence in this lane, because Caps picked up two kills there. So despite the CS disadvantage, he had been losing the 1v1. He is now going to be almost dead even in gold. So Fnatic making up for some of those lane deficits with these fights. And one of the best things about Reckless is the fact that he rushes Boots too. He's on Tristana. He's very safe. You can leave this lane as much as you want. You can see they still have so much pressure on the turret. Fnatic about to do what we said, open up this map and look yeah. to accelerate the game. Three members coming down, bottom side for IG though. Kurt is very low, but... Yeah, that was proper respect. Now. That was proper respect for Fnatic, not to give away those kills there. But I gotta say, this is still a 300 gold lead for Fnatic against the best early game team in the LPL. This is, I think, above and beyond what many expectations were. Yeah, I mean, they're playing a really good game here. Certainly much closer than the last time around of Fnatic showing they can go blow for blow with IG here. You do always have to worry a little bit about this ticking time bomb on the Fiora though because while IG is certainly known for their late for their early game and their laning they have picked a lot of late game as well you have the rise the Kai'Sa and Fiora this monstrous split pusher so Fnatic I want to see them continue to be proactive continue to find these fights where they have been succeeding 
And look how frustrating the Shy is in lane, just continually trying to poke out onto Brippo, who now goes forward. Finds a bit of a trade for himself as well. And of course, the Shy not going to trade into W whenever Purge is active, but can come in for pokes afterwards, maybe. Letting the push happen for now, though, as the minion wave is this time in Whippo's favor. Shy will life steal and sort of stay alive with the Ninja Tabby, and that's going to continue to be equal. But now, we look at the bottom river. This Mountain Drake is alive, and it's going to be IG once again pushing forward, taking away a lot of vision as they drop down a few wards. And Try to make darkness now in this southern river for Fnatic. And they just want to limit the opportunities for that bottom lane to come under siege any further. You can see the Tristana once again solo laning. Whippo coming down. The CC, they're going to find the W on a rookie. They're going to pull him back. The ult's going to land. They might have the damage, but no, the Lee Sin kicks back caps. And there will not be any kills. Ult's traded on a couple of sides here. That's even Rome Warp down as Fnatic comes up. And that was actually a TP cancel from the Shy, so they do get that out also. But he is up on this top lane turret getting some damage down. And we'll see if he can get enough to really make that work, because so far, it seems like a great play, again, from Fnatic, putting pressure on that mid laner, and Broxa, you know, there to respond, Whippo there to help out Caps. They're all trying to collapse around their mid laner and, and get Caps going. The Caps is sadly beginning out of play. Now the flash for the Q's going to land the knock up there. Rookie has no escape buttons. They've got the crowd control and a 2v1 kill in mid. And one more time, they punish the over-aggression of Rookie. Credit to Hillisong, willing to leave this lane and get in Rookie's face. Cap's now rolling. I mean, you can tell Rookie wants the 1v1. He says, I'm beating this guy. I can take this guy. But he needs to respect the fact that Fnatic are playing as a team, that they are constantly sending extra members there to support Caps. It's not about the 1v1. It's about the movements on the map and Reckless looking like he's about to pick up first turret. Exactly. Across the map, good things for Fnatic. Already a 1,000 gold lead for the EU LCS champions. They will get solo gold onto Reckless. Add 800 more gold to their pockets. For now, denying farm. A little bit of gold goes over to Jackie Love, but still the income is going up. 600 on Reckless himself here. Fnatic on a sizable early game lead 15 minutes in. And nothing's changed about Tristana. Let's take another look at the play in the mid lane. Once again, Rookie feels like he's winning out on this 1v1. He's trading, he's picking up CS, but a great little engage. And, and where's the vision? He can't see anything, but yet he's running forward. There is no wards around the mid lane here for IG. And Rookie needs to play with respect to the other members on the team. Yes, you're winning the 1v1, but you are not in a position where you can take on two, three members that Fnatic is constantly sending to this mid lane as you see Bwipo once again here. Hillisang once again here, looking to hold down Rookie. Yeah, that's by the next big play in this map, though. No Drake's pick just yet, but still the 1,700 gold lead puts Fnatic in the lead despite a very rough landing matchup for Caps. It's still been okay for the rest of the map. Here's Whippo being pushed around by the Shy. The Blast Cone popped on the right side of it. Oh. And Whippo Ding. does not have easy ways out. Has Summoner Heal pops that one. Has a jungler now on top of this one. And it's up for the rest of the trade as Ning does join in. But the 3v2 as Caps has reinforced. But watch out as a jungler is being reinforced now on the top side. Look at this by Reckless. Just getting the kill on a Jackie Love who defended a 1v2 fruitlessly. IG will trade for a Drake for the top lane pressure. And it is just a smarter map play right now from Fnatic. They are punishing the LPL squad of Invictus Gaming. Every time they get a numbers mismatch, they take full advantage of it. The team play has just been so much better from Fnatic. IG have been having strong individual laning performances, but Fnatic has been moving as a squad, finding the better fights, finding the odd man matchups, and punishing IG wherever they don't have that support. Caps blind picks his mid and is three and one in the matchup. The bot lane got first turret, second turret as well. They're actually winning on the other extremes of the lane. Whippo came in, but he is not the star of this show. He's simply trading farm with the Shy. And the rest of this map for Fnatic are getting farther and farther ahead. They picked up Rift Herald as well to supplement their 3,000 gold lead. And most of that gold right now is sitting on Reckless. You know, whilst we've been talking about the action in the mid lane, it is really plays like this, the isolation of Jackie Love. Once again, this is without great vision coming in for the Invictus bottom laner. Goes towards the turret and gets picked off. Yeah, he walks a, a more dangerous route. There's no wards whatsoever from IG on the top side of the map. And Hillisang and Reckless easily make that dive happen. They knock down another turret as well. And whether or not the Shy is doing well in the side lane doesn't really matter right now when Fnatic are pressuring IG so heavily, are keeping the tempo of this game very, very fast. So IG need to find a way to staunch the bleeding, to slow down this game a little bit and allow the Shy to work in the side lane. Now, Invictus Gaming, they have been called an early game team a lot. They have to win the early game. Statistically, though, they were the third best team in the LPL at winning with a gold deficit.
the win rate is still not positive. You're behind, this is expected, but they've actually been pretty decent at making comebacks happen. We'll see though as they now go in the top side. Caps in 1v2, the revived the force, in. and there's reinforcements on all Locked sides. And this is gonna be now Caps once again jumped on the shutdown. Crucially, goes to Jackalip. Traded already right now, this thing is down. Whippo is quite low, gets the shield, but Shy does come in for that one. And now Hillisong over the wall. The Realm Warp though on the wrong side of the jungle will not find anymore, but a two for one in favor of Invictus starts the comeback. But watch out, as they're gonna go for a little bit more, the Shy in the 1v2. Pop Steel has to run backwards, Balan flashing and finds nothing for it. That was over aggression. That was frustration, Freak. You can see they just want to find someone and hit them as hard as they possibly can. But once again, Reckless jumps on top of Jackie Love. He's two levels up, he can take him. Lots of damage coming out. Tristana finds the solo kill. Beautiful job there by Reckless. Jackie Love just walks into Reckless' face, bold as you like, but that man is two levels up, has two completed items and you stand no chance in the 1v1. Also has summoner spells and just pressure everywhere. Once again, a silly fight for the uh, AD carry of Invictus Gaming to look for. Extends that gold lead to 3,000. This starts initially as a good play. You can see it already. Urgot down bottom lane. They get the jump on Caps and they're willing to make the play. Yeah, they're willing to fully commit to this kick flash back into Rookie. They pop the resurrection very early on and Jackie Love and Bowland are here faster. That is the key thing to note. So when the Shy comes in, you can see Brox had knocked out. They commit onto Bwipo or taking him down and this is a good, strong play here from IG, but then kind of over committing, going over the wall. And then Jackie Love just walking in, doesn't see Reckless coming out of the brush there. And Reckless just jumps straight in on him and takes him down. Yeah, I love the confidence play there out of Reckless. This is a player <laughs> that we want to so see. So does Whippo. Step up. <laughs> yeah. And now is 30 CS in his advantage, has taken down three turrets on the map and has himself a 2,000 gold lead. Yeah, this is a very rich Tristana, already well above two items, has a lot to show for himself here. Fnatic have relied on him time and again, and he is showing up now at Worlds. And the setup for the tiebreaker match, a Fnatic win, they will battle IG yet again just after this game for that first seed out of Group D, and they're looking like it. They're looking like they can make that rematch and that showdown happen. They certainly are. I mean, you've already knocked down all of the outer turrets. It is three to zero in that regard. And when you are behind like this, not only is it hard for the Shy to get any advantages in the 1v1, he doesn't even have the vision to really attempt it most of the time. You can see there's no deep wards at all across the map for IG. So the Shy really is not gonna have the confidence to actually get out on the map. And this is gonna mean he's only pushing the wave and backing off, pushing the wave and backing off. And that's kind of buying time for Fnatic to set up their seed, which is what they're doing now. Well, Harold is summoned. Of course, mid lane, uh has no outer turret, so getting it all the way might be a little bit more difficult, but it depends on IG's defense. They've got their dual lane here, and we'll see what their next defense is going to be as both the Rise and Lee Sin are coming around. Fnatic joining forces, though, as four of them run through. Ur got a bit late to the party, but will show up also. Charge comes in, and Jackie chunked a little bit. Harold falls, though, the push in. Valen at half HP, but that's all the Herald gets. End of the day, just some turret damage. However, that is very good chip damage. That means one more mistake. They push through mid lane. They have threat on the main base, and we are only 21 minutes in. Do want to go back to the fact that, you know, Rookie at the moment would be fine probably in the 1v1. The Shy is fine in the 1v1, so I like Fnatic's decision to just group up and continue to push as a group. Yeah, they're just going to straight up take the turret. Fiora is heading down to the bottom lane, so stay as five. You know that they cannot contest you in this 4v5. IG is making the conscious decision to give up the turret to try to get more in the side lane, but it's just going to be a bit of farm, a little bit of denial from Whippo, and the advantage for Fiora matters very little if he cannot make good on it before Reckless just knocks down the base. Yeah, I mean, Reckless is gonna do a really good job of sieging and, and continuing the Fnatic win condition, whereas the Shy, who is sitting on a 1300 gold lead, kind of has to split push. She's not gonna yeah. out team fight this Tristana. So look at this gold difference, the 4,000 advantage, subtract another 1,000 for the 4v4, and it's actually 5,000 gold that Fnatic are ahead when they siege like this. And I also think the fact that Broxa has just been Majority of the time, apart from the one play top, first of the play on the side of Fnatic. He seems to be beating Ning around the map. When you mention, you know, the fact that Alistar is such a potent champion, while well, they weren't able to use it in the early game, and now Ning and Baolan have the tough job of being, you know, the front line, the initiation tool, as more like bruises than pure outright tanks. Ning even going for a Black Cleaver, going to be so squishy in these fights. 
It really is, but they maybe feel, hey, we need the pure damage. They're just trying to knock someone down, but the Shy getting caught out. Yeah, pure damage onto the Shy, not immunity much of anything. It's just tossed around. Health bar is getting lower, but they he don't have the, the Ergon of the damage. Ultimate. That was beautiful. No fear here. And the rest of the team has already teleported in. So five versus what could be five. As caps may come down, but Reckless is pushing in mid right now. The Drake aggro comes right back out. IG able to defend themselves, but using a lot of summoner spells to get out. I really am loving the decision making from Reckless right now. Every time there's a non committal to a fight, he stays and catches the wave. He's now building himself a CS lead. This time, they're able to also look towards a dragon. Ooh, Ning almost gets Whoa. in, but not gonna happen. Has to ward hop right back out, but I appreciate the attempt. That was pretty safe. Yeah, gonna go for the attempt, but Fnatic do claim themselves that infernal. Gonna feel really good about it, and it's getting about to that time where they can start to look towards the Baron, where they can start to secure vision in that area. At 24 minutes with Reckless closing in on his IE, they are gonna be able to kill that Baron quite quickly. However, their tank in turn isn't the best, I would still say. We mentioned the fact that they don't have the greatest engage if they're forced to just turn and go for it in open spaces. This is a composition that will run you down. Resets are plenty for Reckless, will help out in the team fights, but they do need to be careful that this isn't, you know, the 5v5 collapse around the major objective. Well, Reckless is on Infinity Edge now. He is a full item ahead of Jack 11. I don't think Kaisa catches up Tristana unless you're at both six items. They're so going to start to Baron. Backs against the wall with a Mountain Drake. They're rushing Baron on the two out of Spike, and it's going down pretty quickly. Now, most of Fnatic can join. Whippo has to burn a Summoner Spell to TP, and we'll see what happens in the 4v4. It's still a health, gold, and numbers, or I would say power advantage for Fnatic. They push back IG easily and get the rest back ward control, and that sneak does not go well. In the 4v4, Fnatic is massively stronger, but in the side lane, the Shy has his Triforce plus the Ravenous Hydra now, so this is an incredibly strong point of the game for the Fiora. If he can make something happen, he can just start to force down these turrets, as you see him doing. And that is the benefit that IG gets by kind of baiting back and forth. At the end of the day, no one lost anything except Fnatic. Going over the wall, looking for the engage, trying to find Balan, they won't find that but wasting time does help the Shy split push. And this is where something, you know, like Orn Sion just comes up king. You just run at him, you start the fight. Instead, they have to go for the Baron. IG have no vision in the area. The Baron's going down so incredibly fast. The Sun gonna hold the front line. It's already gonna be dropping pretty fast. The turret's gone to the bot side. They're not TPing back in. He's finally gonna join the squad, so it will be a 5v5. But how soon will it happen? They're not staying on Baron. It's a team fight instead. The suppression is in. Fear beyond death by Falwin. They got a second kill already. IG are gonna be wiped off of the map. A double kill for Caps. IG are scattered, and it's back to Baron, but Ning is alive. Fnatic straight onto the Baron. They've already killed three. It's up to Ning now to try to make the hero play. We'll see if Fnatic even give him a chance, so he has no vision in the pit. He lands a Q. They know that's not on cooldown anymore. Not available. Has a trinket. When can he get in? Realm War played by the opportunity. They got to keep waiting out all they these tools. Reckless over the wall. He's going to shut down Ning. And that is a Baron after four kills for Fnatic. And what a performance from Fnatic. Great decision making. They leave the Baron. They get the execute and secure the objective afterwards. Flawless team fighting. Really has been here for Fnatic. And the Shy TPing in. IG need to contest this, but they're not able to really find a good entrance. Jackie Love is split from the side and takes a needless amount of damage right off the bat. The fear from Urgot Ultimate locking him up. And I think the willingness of Reckless to burn the hop at the start to make sure that he was behind these front lines to completely swap the angle of the fight was what really secured it there. And they fought a very tight front to back with their bruises, medium range comp we said, but were able to run forward as a group and take them down. And despite the fact that the Shy is so dominant in the side lane right now, you saw he couldn't do anything in that team fight. He cues forward, parries, and then he dies instantly. It's so hard for Fiora to team fight into a composition like this. So IG really were pulled out of their element, away from their strengths when Fnatic forced this fight. And it was a great setup from Fnatic. And now with the Baron buff, with the Dristana on three and a half items, they are looking to break the base and end the game. Time may be running out for the LPL runners up here as IG are stuck inside their base. Baron buff still on for two minutes and Fnatic start the siege in earnest. Bot lane under attack. So there's decent enough wave fear and decent enough threat that there's no tower dive just yet. Only a little bit of damage dealt. Now for round two, this time with a cannon minion. Might be a little bit easier. Fnatic really bullying forward. Whippo pushing the team back, and the turret is gone. IG must forfeit this, but Valan could be the target. He's going to be gone already. That's a one for zero. How much more will they find? Jackie Love forced to flash away. Cat finding a knockup. 
Inhibitor down, Fnatic. They can easily walk away with their kill and their inhibitor. They're just looking for the game here. They're gonna keep going forward. And they're gonna try hard. Ning gets CC'd. They find the back line. A rampage for Reckless. And they can get it all right now into the back line. There's nothing for the shy. Two deaths in there. And that's gonna be the Dex's turrets falling. That's gonna be Fnatic only giving up four kills and a 28 and a half minute win over Invictus. And that was a clean closeout. Cannot stress how well Fnatic has played that game. 5-0 and 5 for Reckless. Double zero, 11 for Hillisong. The bottom lane showing up. They really did today. And Fnatic, it was about the teamwork, about the team play. Caps falling behind in the 1v1, but Fnatic always making the roam, collapsing on the mid lane, having faith in their mid laner to come through in the team fights if they got him back into the game. And Fnatic, I mean, they played an incredibly strong game. And IG, honestly, you saw them at their computers. They look shell-shocked. Yeah, absolutely. And this is what has historically happened when the EU LCS runs into the LPL. They outthink them. They beat them around the map. They make them more responsive than proactive. And that is tough to do. But Fnatic able to execute upon it in this game. Incredibly exciting game for Fnatic and for Fnatic's fans and Europe in general. And now for more on how they forced a tiebreaker. Let's get a breakdown from the analyst desk. Thank you, Freak. It was well worth the wait, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Fnatic gets the victory over IG to force, force rather the tiebreaker for the first seed. Deficio, you said side selection was going to be superbly relevant to this matchup. Fnatic on the red side. Ooh. I want to take a look at how they utilize this red side draft advantage. Yeah, so by supping in Whippo, obviously we know Aatrox, Urgot, they can swap them between caps and whip up in the top lane. I thought it was going to be like an Urgot first pick into an Aatrox trade and you would get that kind of skill matchup. But because we got the Alistar first pick, Fnatic instantly pulled the trigger, said we get the two S tier picks. We do not care if we show early that we actually will have both our soul laners because we can still change them around depending on what the enemy team ends up picking. Yeah, and I also love the aggression that both IG and Fnatic showed in the draft. Like, the fact that you're expecting the swap, so they go for Alistair because they're trying to get the aggressive bottom lane. Fnatic willingness to do the double power picks. And just all the way down to the Fiora, like, I don't actually feel like there was a really... I can't point to a bad decision for either team. Right. It just came down to execution in game where Fnatic really shined. I've got a bad decision for Invictus Gaming. It was putting Ning on Lee Sin. Uh, again, this <laughs> I guy mean, you has... that, but Brox's Lee Sin was devastating and that for was all the these thing. games. It was a denial pick. I 100% agree. Yes. I think they saw how Broxa was performing in the early games. They decided they cannot let this champion go through. And now Ning looks like a vastly different player when he's on a champion that he's not comfortable playing. He was definitely not good in this game, but in the mid lane early on, it actually looked really bad because the rise pick from Rookie in the short lane just constantly punished the Aatrox. Rookie was up like 25 CS before we even had a fight around the lane. But because Broxa and Hillisang did what they've done all summer split long, they went mid. They played around caps. They got caps back into the game with some really good ganks. And that actually allowed the Aatrox to do something here. And it also was the fact that Reckless was able to just free farm without Hilly by his side. So not only do you now have the Aatrox available, Urgot, yeah, he's not pulling out too well, but this Baron call. Yes, this Baron. I, you always are kind of scared before Baron goes down when a team is snowballing, but the fact they start the Baron with Ripple walking from bot to mid, they force the Shy to TP in into a team fight on Fiora, and then they Beautiful turn. Play. I thought that play was so good. When we were watching it live, I was like, Fisher, I can't go for Baron, and we're thinking, well, the most they can do is try to force a fight, but they're just going to lose it at that exact power spike. I think that eventually, if this game does go late, IG would have outscaled, but at that moment, Ion Reckless, super strong, Aatrox and Urgot, they're going to win it. And that was the brilliance there. You know, with Hilly so far out of the lane, and the fact that Reckless was still able to eat up all of the farm, pick up multiple kills on Jackie Love, who just walked into his face, and then took down three towers, suddenly Tristana is springboarded so far ahead that on that Invictus, or Invictus Gaming, on that Infinity Edge power mm -hmm. spike, they immediately called for the Baron. And I think that's important uh, to highlight regarding Reckless. You know, the person who didn't play half the regular season games because it was the mage meta, he subbed himself out right there. 
during playoffs. For most of it, it was still the Caps show until the final itself against Schalke, and they started going back towards regulars and said, we trust in you as a late-game carry. It's not been the case so far during group stages, but this game specifically, mm -hmm. after losing a bunch of 80 carries, you start seeing the champion pool are not very big for right. him, but he wanted Tristana against the Alistar so he could dodge out the combo. And then because he actually managed to get so much free time, he outplayed Jackie Love. Oh, he found himself on an island for a large portion of that game in taking the bot lane turret, the top lane turret, even the mid lane turret. Mm -hmm. Lots of gold being funneled into that Tristana's pocket from turret structures. And that was largely because of this go mid 50 times yep. over strategy. <laughs> and I do go mid with you. And you know who was integral to that strategy? It was our Mascar player of the game in Hillisong. This guy really stepped up today. Yeah, this there are three things that enable this. It's the vision control in the river, it's the fact that they have Tristana, and it's the fact that he just executed these ganks so well. And this is night and day different uh, performance from Hilly from game one to game two against Invictus Gaming. Game one, he takes the Rakan. It's like coin flipping. How many times is he going to power in down yep. the mid lane? Game two, he showed up massive. I think there was four ganks by Hilly alone on that mid lane, constantly setting everything up, controlling all the vision. Looked completely different on Braum. And we have so many Braum players who pick it just to try and go even in lane, and then they don't actually look for aggressive plays early. Hilly's the opposite. He's the Q flash Braum as fast as possible into, you know, ulties whenever he can from long range to try and hit the one guy and the fact he actually managed to bounce back compared to the last time they played each other i think it was a huge deal for Fnatic's early game all right here's the fun part we get to talk <laughs> about game three between these teams yeah. now side tiebreaker side selection you guessed it ig's red going to red side, side. No! Wait, wait, all right they is have it side duke or is it the shy faster average win time faster Just average win know. time for yeah. ig means they get side selection they elect to go to red side to answer your question duke is coming of back course. in for the shot yeah. oh, okay so Weepo is, is staying yeah, okay. as far I have not received any word, which means that we pose in because they'd have to submit it. So with this information, let's start talking about, let's start theory crafting about this red side because we just saw the willingness of Fnatic to take both the Aatrox and the Urgot. Yes, that's but if now. IG were if IG were to play a similar draft setup as Fnatic and leave both Urgot and Aatrox up. I assume Fnatic will first pick one of those two. They should first pick one of them. I think that's another reason you keep Whippo in right now, so you can take whichever one he prefers to play in the top lane matchup. But I don't think Invictus Gaming's strategy is going to be the same from this last game that we saw going forward. I actually think they're a little bit gun-shy now, and we're going to see a traditional tank, a Scion, a possible yeah. Org, ah. or maybe the Urgot if they can get it because it fits into that bruiser mentality, and they're going to try to play a slower game unless Jackie Love just decides to throw down the gauntlet mm. and grab Draven. Yeah, I think it's going to be an Aatrox and an Urgot banned from IG. And, and oh, I, straight and I up. Think I mean, it'll trade, be, worst it'll, case. I don't even think they want Make to Make a potato I think versus just, potato? No, I think they want as many counterpick <laughs> opportunities as possible. Sweet potato. And that, that may leave up the Akali and the Aurelia. Okay. And I'm really curious to see what those counterpicks would be. Yeah, if it's not Aurelia, what's Cap's blind picking? Last time it was yeah. Swain, he got counterpicked by Syndra, and he lost lane even harder than in this game. He needs to find a pick, and a regular first pick could be an option. Well, this time we just had two aggressive teams run head first into each other. We'll see if any adjustments are made, in particular from the IG side, as they were the ones who got knocked down. When we return, it's the rematch for the number one seed between Fnatic and Invictus Gaming. Why would you touch that browser? Especially if you've been here the whole time.